There are few places on earth where you can ski, surf, be transported back in time over 5,000 years, watch a pot of orcas frolic in the midst, or take a stroll through the world's best urban park, all in one day. Vancouver is that place. Welcome to Watchzilla, today we are going to explore the one of Canada's most popular cities, Vancouver. It's no coincidence that many of Vancouver's most popular attractions are outside. Nestled between vast valleys, lush temperate rain forest, and an unforgiving mountain range, Vancouver, British Columbia is unmistakably west coast. This chic coastal city is the perfect mix of urban sophistication and breathtaking outdoor scenery. While Vancouver is one of Canada's newer cities, it holds the title as the most ethnically diverse and the densest, with more than half a million people crammed into its modest downtown core. It's easy to take in the city's wonders on foot or take advantage of the public transportation including the sea bus and SkyTrain. And though it may sound crowded, after hosting a very successful 2010 Winter Olympics, Vancouver is consistently voted one of the most livable cities in the world. Navigate the sprawling city parks, head to the mountains and explore the quirky neighborhoods to celebrate the city's unforgettable energy. Number 10. English Bay. Vancouver's West End neighborhood is one of the most unique in Canada. Oceanfront English Bay centers on one of the city's loveliest and busiest beaches. English Bay's first beach is the most populated beach area in downtown Vancouver. In the summer, it's hard to know where the tourists end and the locals begin. Part of the West End neighborhood, English Bay offers shopping and high-end restaurants, but is also a popular outdoor area where people come to walk, bike, rollerblade, or hang out with the public art installations. English Bay is not far from Stanley Park, and a waterfront trail joins the two. It's the most densely populated urban neighborhood in the country, and because of its adjacent location to Stanley Park and with the popularity of the seawall, it's a highly transitional neighborhood. In the summer, English Bay Beach draws throngs for sunbathing and swimming. But the whole neighborhood is a top destination year-round for shopping, dining, waterfront strolling, beautiful scenery, and art. The beach is strewn with large tree trunks, which make a perfect back rest for sunbathers. One of the biggest events of the summer is Celebration of Light. Generally occurring around the last week of July, spectacular fireworks are set to music. Another popular event is the New Year's Day Polar Bear Swim, when hardy swimmers take a dip in the chilly Pacific waters. When dinner time hits, wander down Denman Street and find a spot for good eats and cocktails. Although it's known for being the place to watch the annual Celebration of Lights Festival, English Bay is also the end of West End's Denman Street, which is filled with food and drink options. Then head on down to English Bay, find a bench, and watch as Mother Nature puts on her finest show in the sky above. Head to Sunset Beach for, you guessed it, beautiful sunset views. Head here for a sunset you won't forget. Number 9. Chinatown. The great thing about seeing in Vancouver is it's easy to knock off multiple things in one visit to any of its unique neighborhoods. Millennium Gate's bright colors welcome visitors to Chinatown. Beyond the ornate Millennium Gate marking its entrance, Vancouver's exotic and interesting Chinatown features modern buildings amid many older ones dating from Victorian times. Vancouver's Chinatown is one of the oldest in Canada and the largest. Vancouver is home to the largest Chinatown in Canada, which got its start in the late 19th century with a large influx of Chinese immigrants. By 1890, there were 1,000 Chinese living here, building homes and businesses in buildings that are still used today. No visit is complete without eating. Perched on the edge of the downtown financial district and gas town, Chinatown offers up an array of funky shops, inexpensive markets, and of course, the best dim sum restaurants in town. Signs at shops and restaurants are often written in Chinese characters, particularly along East Pender, Kiefer, and Main Streets, the main shopping areas. Tucked in among the restaurants that offer a wide variety of Chinese cuisines is a shrine to Jimi Hendrix, who lived here with his grandmother when he was a child. Grab one of the 1,000 seats and try some authentic Cantonese dim sum at Flota Seafood Restaurant. Sunday is the busiest day for dim sum, but also the best with multi-generational families sitting down and chatting about the week's events. Also, tucked away on Pender Street, is one of the world's narrowest building. It's just two meters. Shanghai Alley is home to a West Han Bell, a gift from the city of Guangzhou in China, to mark the 15th anniversary of Vancouver becoming a sister city. Then walk off those pork buns and chicken feet on a stroll through the tranquil rock-lined paths at Dr. Sun Yat Senator Classical Chinese Garden. Every year, Chinese New Year is celebrated with an exuberant parade. Number 8. Van Dusen Botanical Garden. 
Often described by travelers as a hidden gem, the Van Dusen Botanical Garden is spread across 55 acres in the center of Vancouver. The 55-acre Van Dusen Botanical Garden is considered one of the 10 best public gardens in North America. Spot and photograph local wildlife, enjoy the hedge maze with the kids, and relax in a serene setting located in the heart of Vancouver. Van Dusen Botanical Garden is close to Queen Elizabeth Park in suburban Vancouver. Although it doesn't offer views of the park, Van Dusen is a large garden filled with various plants and flowers that transforms into a light-filled wonderland during the holidays. More of a work of art than a garden, Van Dusen displays 255,000 individual plants from across the globe in a gorgeous setting. There's a picturesque lake and a hedge maze made from 3,000 cedars. Packed with towering trees and other perennials, these botanical gardens are a great spot to unwind or take a few selfies. Woodlands and five lakes frame the grounds, but the unique climate of Vancouver allows plants from the Arctic tundra to the Himalayas to the tropics of South America to bloom at different points throughout the year. With the flora comes the fauna. Animals, from amphibians to 65 species of birds, make the garden their home. Visitors can also enjoy an Elizabethan-style maze, the Botanical and Horticultural Library, and the many totem poles and sculptures scattered throughout the garden. Recent visitors called the garden very peaceful. The garden features several sections, including a stone garden and a hedge maze, a favorite among past visitors. But perhaps the most popular feature of Van Dusen is the Labyrinthum Walk, described on the garden's website as the most photographed area of its 55 acres. The path is made memorable by the yellow, chain-like blooms that hang from the laburnum branches. You can explore all of the garden's meandering paths with a self-guided tour, pamphlets are available at the garden information desk. If all that walking makes you hungry, refuel at the two eateries on site, the Shaughnessy Restaurant and the Truffles Cafe. Number 7, Vancouver Aquarium. If you've ever wanted to get up close and personal with what lies beneath the frigid waters of the Pacific Ocean, or what's living above in canopies of the Brazilian Amazon, the Vancouver Aquarium gives you that opportunity. Those in the know say the Vancouver Aquarium is definitely worth exploring, whether you're traveling with kids or just looking for a little extra marine knowledge. One of North America's largest aquariums, and conveniently located in the heart of Stanley Park, this attraction is one of the most popular things to do in Vancouver. As the home of more than 50,000 different animals belonging to 734 different species, this is a great place to become acquainted with local animals as well as exotic creatures. There is lots to see, and as the aquarium sees a regular rotation of unique exhibits, you may want to give yourself at least a day to come nose to nose with belugas and learn about how essential the salmon is here in the coastal ecosystem. But don't come here expecting SeaWorld, past visitors say the aquarium's focus is more on interactive exhibits and education and less on choreographed animal performances. Different exhibits mimic various habitats, from the icy tanks of the Canada's Arctic exhibit to the colorful clownfish and intimidating black tip reef sharks sheltered in the tropic zone. Don't miss the Graham Amazon Gallery, a giant atrium where three-toed sloths and stunning tree frogs take shelter from the hourly simulated rainstorm. While some recent visitors comment on the steep cost of admission, they also say that, if you schedule enough time, it's worth the price. For a little extra, you can tag along for a behind-the-scenes tour of the aquarium. Number 6, Gastown. Gastown is Vancouver's old town. Gastown is Vancouver's most historic neighborhood, and it's located just next door to the downtown area. The oldest part of the city, Gastown is an area of restaurants, galleries, and shops set in carefully restored Victorian buildings. Heritage structures, cobblestone streets, and iron lampposts give the district its distinctive atmosphere. Densely packed but stylish, you'll find cobblestone streets and beautifully refurbished buildings. Gastown is a short walk from Canada Place. Gastown came into existence in 1867, when a man called John Dayton arrived in the scene. Dayton had a habit of launching into lengthy stories and soon acquired the nickname Gassy Jack. As a result, the vicinity became known as Gassy's Town or Gastown. A statue of the proprietor now watches over the neighborhood in Maple Tree Square. It was destroyed by fire that same year and was quickly rebuilt but deteriorated in later years. Gastown was reborn in the 1960s. Today, Gastown is Vancouver's center for art, fashion, and entertainment. As a national historic area, Gastown's old buildings are filled with trendy shops and boutiques, innovative restaurants, traditional native and cutting-edge art, and a lively entertainment scene. After browsing the boutiques and galleries, grab a cocktail or dinner and make it a night out. Highlights in the area 
besides the food and drinks, include the steam clock, Hotel Europe's flat iron building like exterior and Gassy Jack statue. Tourists stop for photos with Gassy Jack and also love to visit the nearby steam clock, which puffs steam powered chimes every 15 minutes. Every quarter hour, the clock shoots steam from its five whistles, and on the hour, it gives off a toot from each whistle. Number 5, Granville Island. This former industrial site is now one of Vancouver's most beloved neighborhoods. No visit to Vancouver is complete without a visit to the artsy Granville Island. Interestingly, it's more a little peninsula than an island. Take a cute little aquabus to spend an afternoon on the island. Practically, its own mini city, Granville Island's former factories now house trendy restaurants, galleries, and theaters. What was once an industrial manufacturing hub is now the meeting place for well-to-do Vancouverites and tourists to shop for the organic produce, sip on premium teas, sample fine chocolates, listen to buskers, and watch sleek yachts sidle on up the dock. But the main draw here is the Granville Island public market, often described as one of the best open-air markets in North America. Among the seemingly endless aisles of fresh produce and local crafts, you'll find a variety of food stalls selling everything from baked goods to ethnic snacks. The vast public market features everything from confections to cheeses to breads to meats. Pick up a few items and picnic next to Falls Creek or indulge in the market's food court, filled with delicious local eats and treats. If the weather is nice, try and grab a seat outside by the water. You can watch ferry boats putter back and forth in English Bay, while enjoying the performances of the buskers who regularly play for market crowds. After filling up on market eats, head to the perpetually busy kids market. This Playtopia sells toys and crafts and features an indoor play area. If you don't have kids in tow, visit Canada's first microbrewery, Granville Island Brewing. You can enjoy daily tours and tastings in the taproom. Visitors call the island lively, colorful and a great place to shop for both gifts and food. Many also recommended experiencing the market with a tour guide to make the most of your time here. Number 4, Capilano Suspension Bridge. The walk through the forest takes on an entirely new meaning when it comes off the fours at Capilano Suspension Bridge Park. Vancouver's first tourist attraction opened in 1889 and has been thrilling visitors with its swaying bridge over a plummeting canyon ever since. Overcome your fear of heights in style, with the help of the almost 140-meter Capilano Suspension Bridge, which hangs 70 meters above the rushing Capilano River. Visitors walk among the upper reaches of an old-growth rain forest on a suspension bridge that is 140 meters long and peaks at 70 meters as it crosses the Capilano River. The footbridge spans a 70-meter deep river canyon leading to an activity park filled with forest trails and a treetop walk through old-growth giants. There's also a collection of totem poles and a transparent suspended platform known as the cliff walk. Once you've conquered the big bridge, the cliff walk, a series of cliffside suspended and cantilevered walkways above the rainforest, won't seem so daunting, right? And after those two experiences, the treetops adventure, seven bridges suspended by 250-year-old Douglas firs 34 meters above the forest floor, will really be a piece of cake. Less adventuresome visitors will enjoy strolling a ground trail and seeing Totem Park and Northwest natives making traditional crafts. If you are staying in Vancouver, the Capilano Suspension Bridge admission, with a free shuttle to the site, is a convenient option. The shuttle runs from downtown Vancouver, and the ticket covers admission to the Capilano Suspension Bridge, including the treetops adventure and the thrilling cliff walk. Also, along Capilano Road, Capilano Salmon Hatchery is worth a visit to spot flashing salmon as they try to swim upstream. The Fish Ladder, a series of staggered pools, allows fish to bypass Cleveland Dam. Check out the underwater windows for a first-hand look at their efforts. You get the picture. Capilano Suspension Bridge Park is full of adrenaline-pumping attractions that immense you in the beautiful outdoors. Number 3, Museum of Anthropology. It's easy to be dazzled by Vancouver's geographical splendor, but to properly get acquainted with this city, you have to start at the beginning, the very beginning. While the city itself hasn't celebrated a large number of birthdays, the area on which Vancouver was founded possesses a rich, cultural past. Vancouver and what are known as the Lower Mainland was peopled some 10,000 years ago. Overlooking the Burrard Inlet, on campus at the University of British Columbia, the Museum of Anthropology offers up a mosaic of aboriginal works, both ancient and contemporary, all weaving together a story that is rarely told to visitors of this great city. The Museum of Anthropology houses one of the world's most impressive collections of art and artifacts from the Northwest Coast First Nations. 
the Museum of Anthropology was recently renovated to add more space for the world-recognized exhibits. The museum celebrates those artifacts and objects that express human creativity from a variety of world cultures. In the Great Hall alone, you'll spot ornately decorated canoes, ritual masks, totem poles and other Native American relics. Other areas of the museum display 15th-century European pottery, priceless jewelry and local art. It recognizes the rich history of the First Nations people in Vancouver with striking sculptures and artwork. You can embark on your own self-guided walkthrough of the museum, but recent travelers highly suggest following one of the docents. Tours are offered an average of three times per day. Consult the MOA website for exact times. Recent visitors said the collection is amazing, though might not interest younger children. If you prefer to take public transit, you'll have to walk from the UBC bus loop stop to the museum. A cafe and shop are also located on site. If you really want to learn about the city's roots and its relationship with the global community, this is one of the most important things to do in Vancouver. Number 2. Grouse Mountain. Instead of enjoying the beautiful mountain scenery from within the city, take a short drive or hop on a bus and go and enjoy it in person. Grouse Mountain is just 15 minutes from downtown Vancouver but offers everything you could want from a mountain. The first people to climb Grouse Mountain, just 15 minutes outside of Vancouver, hunted grouse on their way to the top, thus giving the mountain its name back in 1894. Grouse Mountain today is one of the most popular year-round adventure attractions I Vancouver, with hiking in the summer and great skiing in the winter. In both winter and summer, Grouse Mountain offers an unmatched panorama in clear weather. That's especially so in the evenings, when the city lights are on. A gondola operates daily running from street level to the summit, where dining, activities, and wildlife await mountaintop explorers year-round. In the winter, hit the slopes for a few hours before enjoying a mountaintop appers ski. When the snow flies, Grouse Mountain is a winter wonderland offering outdoor skating, snowshoeing, skiing, and snowboarding. The ski runs are not particularly difficult, and Grouse Mountain is a fun family outing. It's also a great place to learn how to ski. The resort also beasts a wildlife refuge, complete with bears, wolves and interpretive programs. Equally enjoyable is a lumberjack show, where visitors can watch lumberjacks competitively chop, saw, and roll logs. Come summer, Grouse Mountain is a hiker's paradise with trails, including the famed Grouse Grind, affectionately called Mother Nature's Stairmaster. In the summer, hiker take the gondola up, watch a lumberjack show, and say hi to Grinder and Kula the two rescued orphan grizzly bears who live in a fenced-in wildlife reserve. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Number 1. Stanley Park. The votes are in and the crowd has spoken, Vancouver's Stanley Park managed to elbow out the likes of New York's Central Park, the Luxembourg Gardens in Paris and Chicago's Millennium Park to be named the world's best park by TripAdvisor. So why is it so great? With 1,000 acres of outdoor fun, Stanley Park is one of the largest urban parks in North America. Where else in the world can you cycle all the way around an old-growth forest, visit ancient aboriginal village sites, steal a tan at the beach, lounge around a rose garden, or get up and close with sea lions and Pacific dolphins? In fact, you could easily spend more than a day here and still not see everything this urban oasis has to offer. The park appeals to visitors of all ages. There are flowering gardens and wooded areas with cedar, hemlock and fir trees that are home to varied wildlife. Kids love the water park, miniature train, farmyard and aquarium. But the most popular spot in the park is the seawall, a scenic 5.5-mile path that visitors can explore on foot, bikes or rollerblades. If you want to experience the park the way the locals do, walk, cycle or jog around the nearly 20-mile-long seawall that hugs Vancouver's waterfront. The path starts at the Vancouver Convention Center and ends at Spanish Banks Beach Park. If you're not up for the walk, you'll find several bike rental companies near the park. There are a handful of bicycle rental spots at the base of Denman Street, and it's the best way to get around the park. With your bike, you'll be able to explore the more than 17 miles of forest trails that are much less crowded than the rest of the park. Travelers recommend biking the South Creek Trail, which leads to the lily pad-covered Beaver Lake. If you're not up for all that exercise, you can ride a hop-on, hop-off trolley or a horse-drawn carriage. Both guided tours include informational narration. Recent visitors said the park offers a great escape from the city and has one of the prettiest seawalls walks around. 
Families with kids in tow will find plenty of family-friendly two-dose here as well, including an outdoor water park and a separate heated outdoor pool. The park also boosts four playgrounds and a miniature train that snakes through more than a mile of forest. The Vancouver Aquarium is also nestled within the park, but costs extra. Art and history buffs will likely want to stop at Brockton Point to see the First Nation totem pole display. It's estimated that some of the original totem poles were carved in the late 1880s. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watchzilla, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.